legislative history research with all of its component parts can feel like an overwhelming task to take on. This six-step process breaks down the path from an initial inquiry and research plan to executing searches for individual legislative history documents. This graphic depicts all six steps. Let's break down each one in further detail. This question, does the statutory language contain an ambiguity, is a critical threshold question that must be overcome before you begin legislative history research. If there is no ambiguity in the law, if the meaning of the law is clear on its face, then analyzing legislative intent and therefore conducting legislative history research is not necessary. You may move on to the next step in your legal research plan. If you determine that the law in question does, in fact, satisfy the threshold question just discussed, and it is ambiguous, then your first task is to research the related case law to find whether the ambiguity has already been resolved. It is possible that your legal question is not the first to address the ambiguity and that past litigation has already tackled the question and resolved the issue. The judicial opinion resolving the ambiguity may be primary binding authority or persuasive primary authority depending on your jurisdiction. Either way, it's a critical part of your research moving forward. In step three, we are still trying to get out of doing this legislative history research ourselves. So if you've determined that the law is ambiguous, and that the ambiguity has not previously been resolved by the court, then your task is to find whether someone has already done all the work to assemble the legislative history documents for the legislation in question. This is most often done for major federal legislation and is referred to as a compiled legislative history. You will find these published in print, multi-volume sets, online on Hein Online, Westlaw Edge, or a platform called ProQuest Legislative Insight. Before you tackle a search for legislative history documents individually, search for an already compiled legislative history. Finally, in step four, it's time to give in and plan a search. The critical piece of information to begin legislative history research is descriptive information about the ambiguous statute. You will need the bill number, the public law number, and or the statutes at large citation to get started. It will be helpful here to refer to Unit 3 and the publication process for statutes to review the meaning behind these citations. In your research plan, consider what platforms will be most useful to search for the various types of documents that make up a legislative history. As you will see later in this unit, different platforms have different documents covering different spans of time, some require a subscription, some are accessible for free, and all of these factors are things to take into account. And last, but certainly not least, execute your plan and search for the legislative history documents. These six steps are meant to walk you through any legislative history question and provide a starting point for a research task that can take many twists and turns.